Thrill Seekers. That, of course, was Obladi Obladas, performed by me and my wife last night. And you can hear more of that stellar performance at the end of the video. So for today's magic trick, I thought I would like to revisit some material that I talked about, I think it was last week, at least on some earlier video. And I talked about it in passing when I was talking about memory. And I realized after I talked about it that this passage was pretty profound and maybe I should spend a bit more time on it. So it's from McDogan's extensive record, Eihei Kōroku. And in case you're playing along at home and have the book, it is Dharma Hall Discourse number 323. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it's Dharma Hall Discourse number 323. And the translators have titled it, This Very Mind Cutting Notches in the Boat. These Dharma Hall discourses did not have titles. I'm not even sure they had numbers. Maybe they had numbers in the original version. But they didn't have the titles, and the titles were added by the uh, translators. So here it goes, and I'll read it to you again. I read it to you last week. An ancient said, and I believe the ancient in question is Mazu or Matsu, who was a teacher of the teacher of the teacher of Huang Po, who I'm going to talk about later in this video. An ancient said, This very mind, this very Buddha. Now there are only a few who can understand this. Although he said, This very mind, this is not the first five consciousnesses, or the sixth eighth or ninth consciousnesses or the various elements of mind and the first uh, these consciousnesses refer I'm going to read you a little footnote refer to the Yogacara theory that includes the five senses as the five consciousnesses and the mind faculty observing mind objects as the sixth sense those are the sixth consciousnesses the eighth consciousness or alaya vijnana in Sanskrit is the repository of all experiences and resulting dispositions both wholesome and unwholesome uh, the seventh consciousness, Manas, in Sanskrit is not mentioned here by Dogen. It is the egoistic f faculty of human consciousness that distinguishes self from other and objectifies the world. This seventh consciousness is not likely to, mistake, to be mistaken for Buddha, as it may be considered the source of delusion. They're probably right that that's not the reason Dogen mentions it, but when we get to what Huang Po says, it sort of casts a bit of doubt about that. But let's go on. Uh, let's see. And then just, uh, yeah. And the ninth consciousness expounded, especially in Shingon or Vajrayana Buddhism, and described it, blah, 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 is the purified eighth consciousness. The various elements of mind, literally, uh, the various dharmas of mind, refers to the Abhidharma psychological teachings of the variety of component elements of reality, most of them mental qualities. Okay, so that's what he's talking about. Also, it is not chitta the mind of grasses and trees, or the mind as heart essence. And chitta is a Sanskrit term that refers generally to the mind in all its aspects. The mind of grasses and trees and the mind of, as heart essence are given by Dogen as the Sanskrit terms of hridaya and kiridaya, or vridaya and iridaya. These are aspects of the mind delineated at the very beginning of the chapter, Awakening of the Mind, in the Tendai, tendai uh, text, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to know that. Uh, and most of Dogen's uh, students were Tendai people. So uh, what these exactly are, let's see, in that passage, this is a passage from Hotsu Bodai Shin, Arousing the Bodhi Mind. Dogen says that bodhicitta, the mind directed towards awakening, arises through the mind of thinking and knowing, or citta, the mind of grasses and trees. Hridaya refers to the life force as seen via ideas of Buddha nature, or Tathagata Garbha, the world as the womb of the Buddhas. The mind of the heart essence, or Vridaya, refers to the heart or core. Okay, so much for that. Excluding all of these, what mind is there that we can call this very mind? It is not thinking, knowing, memory, or sensation, not views, or understanding, not spiritual knowledge, or clarified knowledge. Arriving at such a ground where we understand it is not any of these kinds of mind, who can fathom this very mind, this very Buddha? 
Uh, there were more than 80 good teachers who were disciples of Mazu, but only Zen master Ruhui of Dongxi Temple in Hunan understood the meaning of this very mind, this very Buddha. Why do I say this? After Mazu uh, left the world, this teacher uh, Ruhui always grieved that Mazu's students continued to ceaselessly recite and memorize the saying, this very mind, this very Buddha. He would say, where does Buddha dwell that could be called this very mind? The mind is like the painter of the world, but you call it this very Buddha. Finally, the teacher Ruhui said to the assembly, mind is not Buddha, wisdom is not the way. The sword is long gone, yet you are cutting notches in the boat. And this refers to an old story where somebody drops a sword off the side of a boat uh, and then keeps cutting notches in the side of the boat to remind himself where the sword went. It just, a, it just means you just don't know. You just kind of, you just have no idea. You just have no clue. After that time, people called Dongxi Temple the Cave of Zen. And there is a footnote, but it kind of doesn't really explain whether the Cave of Zen is supposed to be a positive or negative image. So I don't know. The meaning of this very mind, this very Buddha, is like this. I sincerely implore you not to be demented and confused. So that's the line. Now, this the reason I bring this up is this is something that's been interesting to me for a while, and I've been trying to write about it, which is why I'm putting up fewer YouTube videos lately, is I've been trying to write again, and writing is coming very difficult to me lately. I'm having a hard time writing. But what I wanted to try to get at is why all these Buddhists, including my heroes Dogen and Huang Po and people like that, will say things like mind only, that this, this universe is mind only, that mind is the, the, the true nature of the universe is mind, yet they are not idealists. And Dogen, I think, is trying here to get at that and trying to put that out there. He's saying, this very mind, this very Buddha. And Buddha, remember, to Buddhists means the universe. You know, it doesn't just mean that guy, Buddha, who lived 2,500 years ago. It doesn't mean a kind of god or, or something. It means the whole universe. So this very mind, this very Buddha means this very mind is the universe, this mind this mind. So when he describes mind, he uses the word mind and then eliminates anything you could possibly think of as being a definition of mind. So anything that his students would possibly think of as being another way to express this word mind, he just says, no, it's not that. But he still insists on using the word mind. Why does he do that? Well, I'm not going to give you the answer in this video, but I'm going to provide you more questions, which is what I like to do. So I found this other passage in the Zen teaching of Huang Po, another favorite book of mine. This is a translation by John Blofeld, and it's fairly old, 1958 is when this came out. Now there are some newer translations. One is contained in this book Zen Roots by Red Pine, which is uh, highly recommended if you you know you want to go out and get a good compendium of some of the real basic Zen sutras and things like ancient sutras and writings from Chinese and Indian masters that the Zen people like. This book contains a lot of good ones including Huang Po's stuff. And then this is a, a translation from Chinese. Uh, well, the translation's by, I believe he's an American. He's definitely not Korean. I, I was going to say, uh, so it's credited to Son Master Subul, who's a Korean master who does the commentary, but the translation's uh, not by him. Uh, well, by Sung Uk Kim. So this uh, Subul didn't do the, anyway. Anyway, this is a new version of the same thing. This is also Huang Po's material. So this is another translation. But I don't know. I tend to prefer the Blofeld translation. Uh, just all things considered. It tends to be uh, my favorite and it's the one I keep going back to. I would rank the Blofeld translation first, the Red Pine second, and the uh, Son Master Subul 
uh, one as my third favorite. So this is the bit that uh, we're talking about. And this is from the Chun Chao record. This is the first part of the book. This contains three parts, doesn't matter. Anyway, if you want to look it up, it's nine, uh, section nine of part one. This pure mind, the source of everything, shines forever and on all with the brilliance of its own perfection. But the people of the world do not awake to it, regarding only that which sees, hears, feels, and knows as mind. Blinded by their own sight, hearing, feeling, and knowing, they do not perceive the spiritual brilliance as the source substance. That's the only thing I kind of don't like about this version is they, they throw in words like spiritual brilliance and stuff like that. I think that is a little iffy, but we'll, we'll continue on. If they would only eliminate all conceptual thought in a flash, that source substance would manifest itself like the sun ascending through the void and illuminating the whole universe without hindrance or bounds. Therefore, if you students of the way seek to progress through seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing, when you are deprived of your perceptions, your way to mind will be cut off and you will find nowhere to enter. So you can't find it if you try to cut off seeing, feeling, hearing, and knowing. Only realize that though real mind is expressed in these perceptions, it neither forms part of them nor is separate from them. You should not start reasoning from these perceptions nor allow them to give rise to conceptual thought. Yet nor should you seek the one mind apart from them or abandon them in your pursuit of the Dharma. Do not keep them, nor abandon them, nor dwell in them, nor cleave to them. Above, below, and around you, all is spontaneously existing, for there is nowhere which is outside the Buddha mind. And that's the end of that particular section. And just to make you even more confused, I'm going to read you Red Pine's translation of the same thing, because it's short. This original pure mind never stops illuminating everything with its own perfect light. People don't realize this and just think what they perceive and know is the mind. Now he eliminates uh, seeing, hearing, what's uh, Blofeld say? Sight, hearing, feeling. Uh, I checked the original Chinese and it does say sight, hearing, and feeling, but uh, Red Pine truncates those all into perceive. People don't realize this and just think that what they perceive or know is the mind. Because what they perceive or know is covered up, they don't see their perfectly clear original body. If they could suddenly have no mind, their original body would appear like the wheel of the sun rising in space and illuminating the ten directions, and it would no longer be obstructed. Thus, those of you who study the way see only what you perceive or know as taking place. If you were to get rid of what you perceive or know, the pathways of your mind would be cut off and would have no place to enter. You only regard what you perceive or know as your mind, but your mind is neither part of what you perceive or know, nor is it separate from what you perceive or know. Don't create ideas about what you perceive or know, and don't think about what you perceive or know, and don't search for a mind apart from what you perceive or know. But don't forsake what you perceive or know in order to get something. It isn't there, and it isn't somewhere else. It doesn't stay still, and it doesn't appear. Go where you will, there is nowhere that isn't the place of enlightenment. So those are two translations of the same passage, and as you can hear, they're a bit different. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not going to give you the answer. I'm kind of working this out myself. I have a feeling for this, and it it strikes me, and, and I feel like I know what they're getting at, <laughs> uh, having worked on this practice for long enough. But it's, it's a very difficult thing, and it doesn't it doesn't get put into words easily. Maybe it doesn't get put into words at all. Maybe words are kind of slippery little buggers that that kind of put us out of range 
of what we're trying to get at when we're talking about this. And maybe that's why a lot of the Zen teachers try to express it without using words at all. You know, they'll snap their fingers and smack the student across the face or do something like that. It's that direct perception, uh, but see, even perception isn't it. It's, it's that knowing and even knowing isn't it. You know, anything you can say about it isn't it, uh, which is part of the answer. But how it's different from idealism is the point. And maybe I'm just going to carry on with another video because I feel like I've overstayed my welcome with this video. I've gone on a little bit longer than I wanted to. Um, and maybe in my next video, I'll leave the difference between this and idealism for the next video. How about that? All right, that's where we'll leave it for today. If you want to contribute to me doing more videos like this where I leave you hanging, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually my only ways of making a living, and I appreciate your support. But as always, this is offered for free, so you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Time. See you later. Bye. Hey, Zygmunt. Enjoying your sunbeam? How you doing? At least you're awake this time, huh? All right, I'm going to go edit the video and talk to you later. Desmond has a barrow in the marketplace. Mommy is a singer with a band. Desmond says to